We're wrong. We're gonna drop him now. They don't know us. Get us out. Fucking give me the rhythm. Give me the light. Now. Beat the beat. Three quarters. Have got it. Plank this. Plank this. Full give me that. Scout Yell if you're ready to shift to base one in two. This is one. Two now. We have five tooth and nail to be here, ladies. Sit up. We dial in. Every black girl in that crowd is watching you. You're setting a goal. You're setting a tone. Let's remind ourselves why we're here. This video is going to be part of my series on the eight, where I'll go over the different aspects of each position. Even if you've never rode before, you may have heard of the small guy or girl who sits at the front of the boat. Now, what do they do and why do they have to be small? The closest comparison to explain coxing is a corner man in boxing or MMA. Now I'm going to throw a couple scenarios at you to explain their job and how it works. Imagine it's the second last round of the title fight you've been training for. The seconds are counting down and you get hurt. Hurt bad. Right as the bell to end the round of the Take it off. Clear your mind. You've got a job to do. Yeah, that's it. Breathe. Just focus on your breathing. In. Out. Now listen here. You've done spectacularly so far. He stung you right at the end there, but he's hurting so much more than you. He's got nothing left in the tank. This is war. Three more minutes of war. I want you to remember this moment. This is where champions are made. Punish him. You're going to take what you deserve. I want you to hit him with that three-piece freedom combo, just like we practiced. You got that? Three-piece freedom combo. And here we go. Execute. Just to explain the metaphor, the sting right before the last round, that's the last 500 meters, the last section of the race, the part of the race where you have nothing left, but you have to give everything. Now, obviously everyone knows it's coming, everyone knows it's there, but a powerful call to action makes all the difference, especially from someone you trust. Which brings me on to my next point. Stay loose, stay long, front end, connection, press through the back end. The Cox is the only person that can see what's happening inside and outside of the boat in practice and race situations. This means three things. Firstly, during a race, since they are the only ones who can see the field, they have to update the crew on where they are in terms of other boats and how far they are to the finish. Yeah boys, three feet down from the lead. Stay team, stay sharp. 12.50 gone, now we go. Now we go, stay clean. Get that gold medal. Yeah, Callum, moving. Leg, 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 yeah. Depending on the situation, the coxswain can tell a little white line about how far you have to go in order to push more out of them. But the worse the lie is, the more trust they lose. The new lie detector 3000 is programmed to go off when it hears you tell a lie. For example, go ahead and tell an obvious lie. Grass is blue. I'm a tall black man. What do you mean by that? Secondly, since the cox is the only one who sees what everyone in the boat is doing with their oars, they can give out technical advice on what to fix in order to find more speed. This means they are also the main communicator in the boat and 
have to make sure everyone is in time and doing the same thing. Level hands to connect. Stay internal. Press through the back end. Phase one and two. There and float. There and float. They can call out the amount of strokes per minute, which is the stroke rate, and the speed of the boat, usually in the form of a 500 meter split time. Eight direct. Nine. Ten. Yeah, good. We're long. We're loose. We're going to shift it down. Two beats. And of course, there's the steering, of which there is two types. Rowing is an all year round sport that's split into two seasons, head racing and regatta season. Head racing happens during the winter and is done in a time trial format, meaning that only one boat goes at a time and they determine the winner based off the best time. Head races are usually in a range of five kilometers or more and the most notable ones being the Head of the Charles and the Oxford and Cambridge boat race. Head races are usually done on rivers which have windy courses which means steering. The Cox has to know what the best line is to take around the bends, whilst also taking into account stream and sometimes tide. And then there's the regatta season, AKA straight lane racing. Now this is why, in my opinion, steering is one of the least important traits to judge a Cox on. Now over time, keeping a boat straight should become second nature. On a straight lake, it shouldn't be too difficult. However, during practice, if you practice on the river, and during head race season, it's obviously very important. The coxswains also have to give orders to turn the boat, park the boat, take the boat out the boat house, as well as putting it back in. The last major part about being a coxswain is the weight. For a men's race, a coxswain is not allowed to be under 50 kilos or about 120 pounds. And if they are, they have to carry extra weight in the boat, which no one wants to do because you want to keep the weight in one place and stop it from moving around. Now here's where the game begins, because obviously you want to carry the least weight possible. So much like any sport where you have to cut weight, the coxswains have to weigh in some time before the race and have to be 50 kg or above. But as soon as the weighing is over, they want to be as light as possible. Now I won't shed any trade secrets, so I'll leave it up to your imagination how they're losing their weight. Now that is the easier part for most, is the hard part is usually making 50 kilos, especially for the taller guys. In my opinion, the weight of the coxswain doesn't really matter as much as their skill. Obviously, as long as they aren't too far off the weight, as studies have shown that an extra five kilos or 11 pounds in the boat will only slow it down by about 0.3 seconds, which is nothing in a head race. But in side to side racing, when the margins are so much closer, you definitely don't want to be the cox that's wandering. Anyways, that's all for today. I want to give a shout out to all the female coxes on all the men's teams. I have no clue how you managed to parent eight smelly, sweaty men daily, but we definitely need you, so I salute you for staying. If you reckon I've left anything out, let me know in the comments. I also filmed this video whilst having water blocking my right ear, so I apologize for any of you. But as usual, subscribe to the likes, buy more shares, and I'll see you in the next one. How many L's did I take this year and how many times did I buck your chicky? Had a cap on my head like 50 when I gave wood to your girl that's dicky.